If 28 joules of work are done against the non-gravitational forces, while the change in gravitational potential energy is 59 joules, and all this applies to a 6.1 kilogram object, then the question is, uh, what's the change in the kinetic energy? Well, we can think about it. The potential energy increases, which is going to tend to decrease the kinetic energy. If the system is also working against, doing positive work against non-gravitational forces, that's going to tend to further decrease the kinetic energy. Now, if we work it through the equation, the work done by the system can be split into the work done against gravity and the work done against non-gravitational forces. Now, this is a breakup that we haven't seen before. We've done it into conservative and non-conservative forces, uh, breaking the non-conservative forces into dissipative and non-dissipative forces and so forth, um, or non -di uh, dissipative and what we called external forces. Uh, so why are we breaking it into gravitational and non-gravitational? Well, the reason is we're given the work done against gravity, that's the potential energy change, and the work done against non-gravitational forces. We can break this into aardvark and non-aardvark forces if we wish to. Uh, obviously, this, con uh, this breakdown covers all forces. A force is either gravitational or it's not, so that the work done by is going to equal the work done by the system against gravitational plus the work done by the system against non-gravitational forces. Well, in any case, the work done against gravitational forces, gravitation is a conservative force. That's just your gravitational change in potential energy. <coughs> That's 59 joules. We're told that this work against non-gravitational non forces is 28 joules. That adds up to 87 joules. So the system does 87 joules of work. The kinetic energy change of the system is the negative of the work done by the system, which will be negative 87 joules. And we can think of that intuitively as by simply saying that we expend 87 joules of kinetic energy in order to increase the potential energy and overcome other forces. Now, if we exert, or if we do, 57 joules of work against non-gravitational forces, while potential energy decreases by 73 joules, what's going to happen to our kinetic energy? Well, a decrease in potential energy will tend to increase the kinetic, <coughs> but work done against non-gravitational forces tends to decrease the kinetic. So I think we're going to be looking at a difference here. Uh, this tends to increase, this tends to decrease. Let's analyze it carefully. Okay, the delta W gravitational is going to get, be negative 73 joules. That's your change in potential energy. And the delta W non-gravitational, while that's a 57 joules that the system does against non-gravitational forces, so that the work done by the system is negative 16 joules. This is the work done by the net force on the system, which therefore equals a change in the kinetic energy of the system. Uh, well, it's equal and opposite to the change in kinetic energy of the system, so the kinetic energy change will be 16 joules. So we see this as expending 73 joules of potential energy to increase the kinetic energy by 16 joules and overcome whatever other forces are acting here. The delta W non-gravitational could be greater Okay, for example, it's entirely possible that there's so much resistance here uh, that we have 157 joules of work done against non-gravitational forces, in which case the potential energy loss would not be great enough to give us a kinetic energy gain because we'd have a loss of 157 joules here. Uh, we'd only tend to gain 73 joules of kinetic energy. So uh, the potential energy loss might not offset the work done against non-gravitational forces, and the kinetic energy could actually decrease in such a situation. Now, let's say that non-gravitational forces do 64 joules of work on an object. 
and that the potential energy of the object changes by negative 69 joules. Now in this case, the non-gravitational forces, whatever they are, there might be a tailwind, uh, there might be an explosion behind the object tending to increase its velocity. Um, but whatever non-gravitational forces there are, they're doing 64 joules of work on the object, potential energies decreasing by 69 joules. Both of these things will tend to increase the kinetic energy, won't they? Well, let's see now. The work done by the system, again, breaking into the gravitational and non-gravitational. Uh, the work done by the system against gravity is the negative 69 joule potential energy change. And the uh, work done by the non-gravitational forces is, I'm saying, negative 64 joules. Okay, and I, I think I might have said that wrong. This is the work done against the non-gravitational forces. Where the 64 joules here, which was positive, was the work done by the non-gravitational forces. Here we want the work done against the non-gravitational forces. So we're going to have to make it negative. It's going to be equal and opposite to the work done by the gravitational forces. So we had end up with negative 133 joules, and a kinetic energy change is equal and opposite to that, or plus 133 joules. And we see here that the non-gravitational forces are somehow helping the gravity. And any dissipative force is, uh, if there was a dissipative force, which there is in just about any situation, uh, the non-gravitational forces do a net positive work in the object so that if there are any dissipative forces acting, they're offset by other non-gravitational forces, and we do end up with positive work being done by those forces.